Who wants some help for B and C? Yeah. You want a hand? Yeah. Okay. Let me help you out for part B and then see if you can take over for part C. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I gave you this clue, right? This guy over here. This helps you work out what happens when x is really large, when you get far, far away on this side. You could do the same exercise for x approaching negative infinity. Interestingly, you get pretty much exactly the same result. So what that tells me is, at very, very far x values, this thing is the y value, right? You see that? y equals this. That's the y value. It's just another label for y. So therefore, I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Do you see that? y, this thing, equals 1. That's what I'm approaching as x is enormous positive and enormous negative. Okay? There's one of the asymptotes. What's the other one? Now, be specific, right? It's a kind of asymptote. What, it's not this kind of asymptote. What is it? It's a vertical asymptote, which means it has an equation of not 2, but x equals 2. And that's important because... Two could be anything, right? So you've got to specify. So uh, make sure you get the sign right. Let's pop x equals two on there. By the way, equations of your asymptotes, important. We said asymptotes are important. What was the other feature we said first? What did we say was important? The x and y intercepts, right? If they are both. So to find the x intercepts, for instance, what am I going to do to this? I'm going to let y equal zero. Do you notice, when you go ahead and do that, when you let y equal 0, do you notice that the denominator becomes unimportant? Do you realize that? Because it doesn't matter what you make your denominator, so long as the numerator is 0, you're good to go, right? Because 0 divided by anything, except for 0, will give you the value that you're after, okay? So that means that my x-intercept is going to be... So I'll pop this guy in here. Do I have a y-intercept as well? What do I do to get a y-intercept? You let x equal 0, the opposite of this. So you're going to get 1 over negative 2. So that's going to be negative a half. OK. This is all the information that I need. I suppose I could add one more thing. Remember we said this limit as x approaches infinity, as x goes far, far over there, is going to be 1, okay? But it's actually 1 from a particular direction. I actually gave you some numbers for, before, like this, that's getting close to infinity, or this, uh, one more, divided by this, that's getting even closer to infinity, and off you go, right? Can you tell me, both of these numbers, are they bigger than 1 or are they smaller than 1? They're, they're a teeny bit bigger. How could you tell that they were bigger without like going to a calculator and getting a decimal out of it? How could you tell? The, the numerator is ever so slightly bigger than the denominator, right? And we're used to that. A number like that is bigger than 1. A number like this is smaller than 1, yes? So therefore, when I'm approaching 1, I'm actually approaching it from above 1. So therefore, over on positive infinity, you're going to come down to 1 from above this line. This is the shape you're going to get. Like that. Just like the hyperbolas you've seen before, this is another kind of hyperbola. On the left-hand side, if I repeat this exercise, but with negative values, think about it, negative values. Uh, instead of positive 1,000, let's put in negative 1,000. I'm going to have negative what on the top? 999, right? What's going to be on the bottom? I'm putting in negative 1,000. I'm substituting in negative 1,000. Negative 1,002. Those <laughs> negatives are going to cancel because there's two of them. Now, is this number above or below 1? Isn't it ever so slightly below 1? Okay. So just like I approached here from the top, I'm going to approach here from the bottom, which is kind of what you expect, again, for a regular hyperbola shape. There you go. Okay. So I'm going towards my asymptotes. I have to. That's why they're asymptotes. I've got those intercepts you told me about before. And this is enough. This is the graph. Okay. Question. So why do we work out if you start from the bottom? 
on the border because um, it's got two arrows. It's got two arrows, but I want to make sure I'm coming from, from this direction, not from that direction. At the moment, you'd be hard-pressed to imagine. Well, what do you mean? How can you come from this direction? If you're looking, you see these two intercepts down here. Or you can. Later on, I'll give you more complicated functions that do exactly that. So I'm just confirming where I'm approaching this asymptote from, if that makes sense. Did it? Sorry, so how, how did you find the y asymptote? Uh, the y equals 1? Yeah. No? Yeah, OK. So I've got vertical asymptotes. And we know where they come from. They come from um, the denominator, right? They come from values that make the function break down, uh, where there's a domain restriction, right? So a vertical asymptote means you can't, you can't go there. This is like uh, uh, out of bounds. The function can't exist there, right? But horizontal asymptotes are kind of different. Horizontal asymptotes are about what's happening for really large values of x over here and what's happening for really large values of negative x over there. Okay? So therefore, what I tried to work out was, if I try some of those values, if I try really large positive values of x, or really large negative values of x, what is y, this thing, this is y, what's it going to approach? And the answer is, as you crunch the numbers, these are all approaching 1. Okay? So later on, we're going to have a look at some analytical ways of doing that, rather than some calculator ways of doing that, because you should be able to get to the point, like I have, where you look at this and you don't need to do this. You can say, obviously, that is 1, but we're not quite there yet. Okay? So don't worry, if it's a little bit challenging, it's because I haven't introduced this idea formally yet. I'm just trying to use it as an informal tool. Can I let you have a few moments to have a go at part C with the same kinds of tools that we did for part B? All those features that I helped you find for part B. I want you to look at the features and tell me, what are they and where do they come from? There are four that I can see. So anyone, any feature you pick, Tell me what it is and why I know it's that. Any takers? Okay, x-intercept. The x-intercept is 2. How did I know that? I let y equal 0, right? And when y equals 0, the only value that makes that true is x equals 2. Again, remember, it's about the numerator there. You don't care what the denominator equals. 0 divided by 3, still 0. That was the x-intercept. Tell me something else. The y-intercept. Here it is at negative 2. How did you find that? You let x equal 0, and it becomes quite easy to evaluate here, because I've given you nice, easy numbers. So we've got these two. How about this guy? Where'd this guy come from? This vertical asymptote, again, it comes from the denominator. Just like I got x equals 2 as a vertical asymptote here, I'm going to get x equals negative 1 as a vertical asymptote here. The last piece of information is this guy, which interestingly is shared with this one, right? Where did I get that from? I've got no working on the board. How did I know? Yeah, sure. You can repeat this process. Um, I, I'm giving you a specific example. If you're approaching 1, do you notice that part B and part C are reciprocals of each other, right? So what's the reciprocal of 1? Also 1, right? So that's why you end up approaching exactly the same thing when you've got the reciprocal of the function, okay? Now I just need to join up the dots. So if you have a look, you can see I'm going to get this shape over here, and then you get this opposite branch in the second quadrant. OK, are you happy? Hmm. So these functions here are actually just sort of my stage. The real question I'm interested in is about sign. Now, well, in mathematics, you know, sign is not just a general word that means something that points. What does sign mean? What does it refer to? It's about, it's about positives and negatives, right? You may want to put that underneath your heading. So to investigate the idea of sign using these functions, what I want you to think about is, what if I could use these graphs to solve, to solve a set of three inequalities that are each related to these functions, okay? The inequalities I want you to solve on the basis of these graphs are x plus 1, x minus 2, when is that positive? See, it's a sign question, plus minus. This guy here, what's that? x plus 1 on x minus 2, greater than 0. When's that positive? And lastly, x minus 2 on x plus 1. When is that positive? You've got three graphs. Positive just means above the x-axis, right? 
can you take a minute to think about that and compare notes with the person next to you, what you 